Okay, so I'm super excited that we're finally getting to perform rotations. It's been in the making for a long time. Um, I remember we first started playing together in 2018. 2018, 2019, we, first, we were first in touch and started exchanging ideas. And now we finally settled on a programme of contemporary music. Uh, we've framed it with um, two pieces by Abel Pet. Um, Parry and Tavala at the beginning and Spiegel and Spiegel um, at the end as a sort of frame and then in between we've got um, selections of the harmonies by John Cage to connect the pieces then there's my solo rotations then you're going to perform a solo as well by Hazel Kava mm -hmm. um, and it's inspired by a piece for solo recorder called Rotations hence the title um, it's by Jan Rockus von Rosendahl The interesting aspect about this piece is that um, it's performed in a circle. So the performer stands in the middle and then there's 12 music stands in a circle around the performer and you sort of play rotating and sometimes the rotations are quite slow and you play material from each individual stand and sometimes um, you might sort of sw uh, swivel around really quickly and skip st stands. So, um, and that is why the program is called Rotations. It's all music that has some sort of element of, of circling, of going round, of rotation. And, and that's also why we've included a choreographer, a wonderful um, choreographer called Sally Marie, uh, who's going to work on, with us on, on that element in particular. What can be very interesting is like in mixing these two instruments, which are uh, which actually are very far away in the time, like you know, one very old and one very new. But we found out also in our first concert we made when um, we, well, of course, there was also rotation and there were some transcription from Renaissance music, uh, some madrigals. And uh, so we, we understood how we could mix the new and the old music and also the modern music who sounds old, like Alvo Part or the harmonies by Cage. And uh, thinking in Alvo Part, uh, which of course used all these modern scales and uh, uh, played by a recorder and especially this kind of suspension of the time. In a different way from the harmonies of by Cage, but can, uh, how to say, give uh, the um, the idea about the eternity or the continuity of the sounds and uh, of the of the program in this case. Yeah, I really like that idea of time. I think, like you said, the Avo Pad and the John Cage are quite different, but in a way they've got in common this so that how they tr deal with time. So Avo Pad, uh, both um, Pari Intervallo and also Spiegel and Spiegel, a very incredibly calm, sort of meditative um, pieces that sort of is, is like you're in a circle and you keep going round and round. And this, it's sort of eternity, like you said, that maybe it's a really good word, I think, for it. And, and we've worked out ways, I think, in which the recorder and the accordion can sort of blend together, especially in Pavi and Tavala, yeah. where I sort of, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm the only one who plays just one note, <laughs> you, play, <laughs> you play the rest of the note, but I sort of fit in um, quite well. And Cage um, harmonies, on the other hand, are like sort of sketches, and um, where time is also suspended, but also he uses a lot of rests. So that's a big, big contrast to the cage and why we've also chosen it to, to put on because we'll play something that's a bit of momentum and then it pauses. And then and we sort of internally hear how it goes. Whereas in the um, in the pet we, we can hear the changes happening gradually. In the cage, it's sort of in our head and, and we sort of tune in and out of, of the piece.
And then in the middle, um, as a sort of centrepiece, um, we've commissioned you, Sylvia, to write a piece for um, recorder and accordion. Maybe you can tell us a bit about the process and how you felt about it. Yeah, know, yeah. I think it was a really fun experience because I've never written for this combination of instruments before. Had you written for <laughs> recorder before? I've, I've written for a recorder before, but not for the Pitzold contrabass yeah. recorder. And I've always seen it and thought, wow. I think before we had our workshop, I just really liked the look of it. I just thought it was, um, it just looks like a bit of a machine, but it sounds very breath-like mm -hmm. and a bit like a little, I think we talked about how it's like this gentle beast. <laughs> um, and I think during the process, um, because it's such a low instrument as well, I was wondering how it would f how it would connect with the accordion. And I've tried to find ways that the accordion might contain the recorder in, in the sound. Um, and um, we've also tried to find some higher higher sounds from such a low instrument. Um, yeah. And that was quite surprising for me that that was possible. Yeah, so we've um, you've included a lot of um, multiphonics, as we call them, so where we start on a low note, but then we split it into its partials and then actually get the really high mm -hmm. high partials as well. Um, and obviously the accordion is an instrument with a much, much wider range than, than the recorder. While I was writing it, I guess I was mainly focused on the sounds at first that, came, that emerged from the workshops we had. But um, while I was writing it, I happened to come to this place called Teesside Wind Farm, mm -hmm. which is this amazing um, wind turbine farm. Um, and I was there on holiday and I just um, was stood at the beach and you could just see these, um, this crowd of wind turbines just slowly, um, just slowly rotating, I guess. And I was quite struck by that movement um, paired with the waves that were coming to and fro on the shore. Um, and I tried to capture that with um, some of the cyclical movement in this piece. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the time the sounds are um, building and then receding and there's this ebb and flow that mirrors the waves. Mm -hmm. um, and even though I wasn't trying to... Um, mm, it wasn't the starting point for my piece. I felt that when I went to that place, it made sense and things clicked and it then provided some direction with yeah. where I was heading. I think it can, um, can have multiple versions of this piece. It can exist in different contexts, I guess. So it could work as a concert piece, but um, I'm also really excited because Sally Marie is coming in to, um, choreograph, um, to add choreography to the piece. And I'm really excited to see um, what what would happen when the music comes together with, with dance and movement. Yeah. And we'll, we'll bring this all together um, in a venue called Music in the Round in Sheffield, uh, which we thought would fit perfectly, this idea of obviously Music in the Round, rotations, um, seems to go uh, perfectly, doesn't yeah. it? So, um, yeah, we are, I think I can speak for all of us that we're yeah. excited to bring it together. Thank you. 